Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, we are Francesca and Juanjo, and yes, we are archaeologists. And you might be wondering what are we doing in an environmental sciences session. In the last few presentations, you have words such as ecological dynamics or sustainability, and the question here is, what can we add to this picture? As it has been stated before, ecological processes are not independent from social dynamics, and we, archaeologists, have the opportunity to study patterns and processes through thousands of years, allowing us to provide a long-term perspective. Okay, um, all this is very interesting, but why do we have to go all the way down to North Gujarat to do it? I mean, it's, it's a very far place. It's far away from here, indeed, but North Gujarat offers an interesting playground in which we can develop our research questions. First, this region is a semi-arid ecotone located between a dry desert in the north and the more humid continental India in the south. And this marginal location makes this area strongly sensitive to the fluctuations of the Indian summer monsoon, which every year creates a strong duality between the dry and the humid season, as you can see in the image below. Moreover, mechanized uh, agriculture has only recently arrived to North Gujarat and only some marginal areas, what means that traditional agro-pastoral activities have persisted, have pervived in, in, in this region, and also the archaeological record has not been disturbed by mechanized agriculture, allowing us, the, uh, giving us the opportunity to study both activities, ethnographical and archaeological. We study archaeological proxies coming mainly from artifacts, objects like pottery, lithics, and also coming from ecofacts that could be animal bones or plain remains. However, if we study these archaeological proxies independently from the environmental ones, then we miss the spatial and temporal relations that define a sociological system. Instead, what we try to do is we try to integrate these three types of proxies or of data sets. One is archaeological, and we get these proxies from the excavation of key sites. Another one is environmental. We get the proxies through paleoecological and paleoclimatic studies. And the third one will be the historical and ethnographical sources. And this multi-proxy approach is integrated into a multi-scale perspective cause, because different patterns can emerge depending on the scale we use in our observations. And here we can relate the archaeological remains with its local and regional environment. Let's now see in, in detail some of the proxies we use for our studies. We have a wide data set of historical information coming mostly from the Indian colonial period, such as geographical journals, topographical maps, some gazetteers or reviews that describes traditional economical activities, also cultural traits. And we also have a very detailed local and regional precipitation records. And we can use, we can use these precipitation trends to calibrate paleoclimatic existing models to understand the Holocene fluctuations of the monsoon in our study area. Also, a multispatial and multitemporal approach use remote sensing data. And here, we use multispectral, rather historical satellite imagery to understand the present-day landscape dynamics and taphonomical processes that are affecting the visibility and preservation of our archaeological heritage. Moreover, the use of geoarchaeological data allow us to relate past settlement patterns with relic geomorphological features, such as the presence of paleo channels or also uh, paleo lakes. And um, archaeology is more than digging, but at a certain point we really need to get there and make a hole on the ground. And that's what we did in key sites in North Gujarat. We excavated three sites to understand regional variability in settlement patterns. And from these excavations, we got some artifacts, such as these grinding stones, from which we studied some ecofacts. Uh, in this case, plant remains. These come from millets, which are uh, small cereals, and pulses, which are beans. Uh, that were the two staples of these populations. We also use botany in a regional perspective. We do regional service to understand landscape dynamics and also to create reference collections to compare with the archaeological remains. And in this way, we can study plant, ex uh, mm. plant exploitation strategies in a wide sense, not just diet as subsistence, but also for fuel or building purposes. We also get some proxies from ethnography. Uh, we, as I mentioned before, 
traditional agropastoral activities are still uh, being performed nowadays in North Gujarat. <laughs> and we can study them and compare them to the archaeological record. We don't do this comparison as a direct analogy, we rather create models from the ethnography that can, then we can apply to the archaeological remains. All these proxies we've been talking about, we have integrated them in an agent-based model. We use simulation to understand population dynamics, like hunter-gatherers and agro-pastoral populations, we, uh, and how they change with the environmental changes, uh, and especially the fluctuations of the monsoon during the Holocene. And well, this is part of a wider project. It's a multidisciplinary project involving several groups. It's called the Simu Pass project. And well, if you can see more, you can go and visit the website. And with this uh, very flash talk, <laughs> you have seen how our PhDs are integrated into a more robust, multidisciplinary approach that use a long-term perspective to understand sociological dynamics. And if you want to know more, still have some time, <laughs> you can keep talking in the coffee break, or you can visit the website, or you can follow our adventures in the Recerca and Axio, in which you will find photos and videos. Okay. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Fritis. <laughs>